Let's play some Sentinels. <laughs> oh, pickle fans, come on. <laughs> oh, you've been quoted out of contact. You must be a famous person now. I am a famous person now. But we're gonna win. Unless the environment kills us. See, I could have waited and taken- We have damage, Dread Warlord boss! I did not think that would work out, but it did. Well done, team. Woo! We are live! Sorry for the slight delay. I swear I had made the uh, poll live and then it wasn't live. <laughs> and so I had to like scramble to make it live again. But such is life when you're flying by the seat of your pants doing live broadcasting. This is what happens when you take a week off. All of a sudden, nothing makes any That's sense right. anymore. <laughs> And you're doing everything wrong. So, greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday. It's, oh, I don't know, 7-ish? 7.04? 7 Something like that. 7-ish. That's why it says 7-ish right in the thing. Thank you for yeah, joining that's us. that's why we think it. Exactly. <laughs> Around the digital tabletop while we play Sons of the Multiverse, One Deck Dungeon, Aeon's End, and more. Uh, the goal of these streams is to have some fun while showing you how to play our games as well as covering strategies that could help you win. Uh, it is... Oh, shoot. I got my thing stuck here. Um, yeah, so uh, we are Handle Labor Games, and we do believe in civil rights for absolutely everyone and in being as inclusive as we possibly can, which means that any comments or activity in the chat actively working against that goal uh, and thus making the lives of any sort of marginalized people more difficult are not welcome and will not be tolerated. Uh, luckily, our audience tends not to be like that. So I say it every week, but typically we don't really need it because y'all are pretty great. So Pretty great and self-policing. <laughs> and self-policing, exactly. So thank you for that. If you do enjoy the show, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. And be sure to check out the other shows here at twitch.tv slash Games. We've got Dolphin's Dive, which is usually Thursdays at around 7 p.m. Eastern. Tales from the Archive, which is usually Sundays at 7 Eastern. And uh, On Deck, which is usually Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern. I say usually because we are moving into the holiday season. We're actually... Quite frankly, we're sort of firmly entrenched in the holiday season, but as a result, the schedule for shows over the next few weeks through the end of the year and into the new year will be a little bit touch and go. If you want to know what is playing and when, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, any shows that are going to be shown will definitely be talked about there um and obviously follow us here on twitch you'll get a notification uh whenever we are live but several of our shows fall on christmas eve new year's eve christmas day new year's day etc so the schedule is gonna be a little bit touch and go for the next few weeks but we will be back in january and things will be wonderful uh i'm jeremy you can follow me at mr j handle uh we lost john's video i don't know if we lost john entirely he is in a place where internet might be spotty, so he might be in and out. Uh, you can follow me at Mr. J Handel, M R J H A N D E L. Joining me as usual, I have to change that as always because now it's more like I'm joining John because uh, I'm only going to be here every other week. Uh, is John, who you can follow? Sorry, I had to disappear there a second. <laughs> no worries, no worries. He's Migrant P, uh, and you can always check out the company at Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and of course Discord, which you can find at discord.gg slash Handelabra. As we are the developers, you can always be sure to get some insight into the process of game making and maybe even see some stuff before anyone else. In fact, we have a poll up right now where you can vote on which brand new Oblivion environment we will play this evening. Now, we'll spend a few minutes talking and chatting here so that you have time to vote <coughs> uh, because we don't want to just have it be like the first three people that showed up. Uh, but yes, vote for which environment you want to see. There's five of them. That came with, or that come with Oblivion. They came with Oblivion on the tabletop. They will come with Oblivion in the digital version uh, sometime early next year. Uh, the choices are my area. What's that? All five of them, not All. two. Like eight. yeah, exactly. In the in when, when we actually when we kickstarted this, it was only two environments, but they've added three new ones since then. So, all kinds of cool stuff. Myarian Refuge, Morningrad, Champion Studios, Nexus of the Void with an early lead, and Fort Adamant. So, uh, make sure you're mousing over the thing and voting on what you want. Um, I have to finish my little pre-roll here. Meridian Refuge. M Meridian? Excuse me. What do I say? Myarian? 
Yeah, Marinian. You say something different every time. My my Marinian refuge. Uh, our games do include tutorials that cover the basics, but we always do our best to explain exactly what we're doing when we do it and why. Depending on how long it takes for us to win or lose, we usually play multiple games in each two-hour episode, or two-ish hour episode. Uh, you can find our games on iOS, Android, as well as PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and always in good old analog cardboard and ink. Check out handalabra.com for more info and to download and try the demos, uh, if they exist, for free. Uh, Sentinels has a free demo. I don't think our other games have free demos right now. That might be a thing we do soon. If you already uh, own our games, we would really appreciate it if you could rate and review us on your chosen store. That really helps people find us, um, and it gives people a good idea of sort of how our games play and what people are thinking about them. Uh, cool. So, yeah, John, where are you this week? I don't know if you went over any of this last week when I was away. Yeah, I am still in Lima, but only for one more night. Mm. So uh, I'm going to be heading to Cusco and... Oyente Tambo, the Sacred Valley, and Machu Picchu, and all of that. Oh. Uh, tomorrow, can, are you okay? <laughs> no, like Machu Picchu is a thing that, like, that's one of those things that's like on my list of like places I want to go to someday before I mm. die. So, on your bucket list, it's on my civilization uh, uh, great wonder <laughs> bucket list. <laughs> I recommend you watch the Idiot Abroad episode of Machu Picchu. It's pretty great if you haven't seen that. Okay. Uh, also, it's a great show. It's hilarious. Um, uh, yeah, so so that we're going to Machu Picchu on Friday. So watch my Instagram and Brittany's Instagram if you want. <laughs> right on, right on. So uh, yeah, one other thing I did that. did want to mention is that um, the Handelabra sort of stocking stuffer sale is still live for a couple more days. It ends on Thursday. Um, so if you want to give the gift of Steam Keys this year, check out Handelabra.com slash Handelabra store. Uh, or I guess I could probably post a link to it. That's the way the internet works, right? Um, and we've got uh, these cool downloadable uh, Steam keys that you can like print out and fold up and, and pop, pop in a stocking uh, for anybody who is a digital tabletop fan in your life. I'll po post it right here. Boom. Um, and that'll end on Thursday. And there's a reason why that ends on Thursday. And that's because the big winter sale that is across all of our stores starts on Thursday. And the pricing will be obviously different. So if you want to get uh, some stocking stuffers, get them before Thursday. Tell your friends. John and Jeremy, side note, the Poke Go winter event is active. Hat Pikachu. <laughs> I will definitely check that out. Um, I actually, have a older Santa Hat P Pikachu. Yeah, I have a there's Santa a Hat Pikachu from last year. But there's a new one. Ah. There's a shadow in my... Uh, it's actually like tons of shadows in my uh, nearby list today. There must be... I don't know if they released more new, new Pokemon or something, but... Okay, nobody tell them, but I got my kids. Let's go... Uh, Eevee for... I mean, they uh, could be watching this. They could be watching this, but they're not, because I know my wife and there's no way they're watching this. Um, <laughs> uh, I got them Let's Go Eevee. Uh, I actually lucked out all three of them wanted Let's Go Eevee, and no, I'm definitely not getting them each their own copy of Let's Go Eevee. They have one <laughs> copy that they can all share on their Switch. So... Um, <laughs> I've never played an actual mainline Pokemon game. I've only ever played Let's Go or uh, Pokemon Go. So I will probably be playing it on my Switch as well um, to try that out because uh, I understand that it's like half mainline Pokemon game and half, you know, new style, you know, Pokemon Go style kind of a thing. So I'm very interested to give it a shot um, because I was just a little bit too old. I never quite got into Pokemon because I was, you know, it was like a couple years gone. I was already done playing all of my fun, you know, whatever games. Yeah. I think I might have been playing Goldeneye at that point. The main games are very much like JRPGs. So if you've played Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or nope. those sorts of games. Nope, neither of those. You've <laughs> never played... Have you ever played a Japanese RPG? I don't think I ever have, actually. Like, I remember, like, the, the first, like sort of RPG RPG that I got into was probably KOTOR. And I remember everybody being like, oh, this is cool, but it's not like a JRPG or it's a no, little it's bit- totally Western RPG e style. Exactly, exactly. And that's why I remember people saying that and, and then always being sort of like, oh, well, if I like this, I probably won't like that other thing. So I've never really played, like I never played a Final Fantasy. I've never played, um, yeah, really any of those things. So I don't know. We'll give it a try. All right. So uh, we're going to close polling at 713. We're going to close polling in two minutes. And then we're going to start a new game of uh, online multiplayer in a new uh, thing. 
Oh, man, you even turned off Oblivion in this build? I was going to, like, go to it and, like, tease everybody. Oh, that's a bummer. It oh, shouldn't well. be off. I don't know. When I'm clicking on Team and Classic, it just goes between the two. It doesn't show Oblivion. Uh, oh, there's no Oblivion mode on in multiplayer. Oh, in multiplayer. That's why. Okay. Yeah, sorry. For, okay, well, here, then. I'll, I'll tease it somewhere else. Not I'm gonna, yet. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to go to just New Game. It's, it's in beta testing now uh, in landscape single player. And oh, we're working on Oh, look at that. Play. Oblivion character card booklet. Yeah, so Oblivion <laughs> mode actually went into beta testing for the very first time this week. And so just, just so that week. I'm, or last week, just so I'm managing expectations, okay? <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's getting ready to launch next week. It means that it is finally not breaking every single time you play it <laughs> that's yeah, what the, that's you can what, actually play it. you can actually play it to the end without crashing the game mostly <laughs> that's what that means i don't think you can get to the end without a bug though that's like gonna be another mouse yes <laughs> i i have played it a bunch of times and i have yet to get to the end without a bug um but yes it is very very cool in fact i specifically went out of my way to comment to christopher about after i played it a few times i was like i gotta tell you i've never played oblivion on the tabletop I was really worried that it was going to feel like a slog, and just even just playing it digitally, I don't know how it feels on the tabletop, it actually feels like it plays faster than team villain mode. Like to me, even though there's probably more to keep track of, it feels like it's just like pop, 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 and I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to play it more. So I hope that that's enough of a tease to get you all excited about it, because <laughs> I'm super excited about it, and so far it has been super fun. All yeah, right. Yeah, on the tabletop, there's like five basically five non-hero turns in a row yes. always that you like go through everything but then there's also lots of like ongoing effects to keep track of like a missions that you add a token if you discard a card or do yeah. a thing if this happens or do a thing if that happens and the, of course the digital version doesn't care anything about taking care of those for you it just does it you don't have to think about it yeah totally all right, so it is 7.15 and it looks like Nexus of the Void has got the most votes at 6 43% mm -hmm. so we will be playing Nexus of the void. You'll notice that there's five new heroes listed here as well. We're not going to be showing those off tonight yet. I guess I'm the king, so I have to click on it. Yeah, because I left. Yeah, so here's the new heroes. These are also in debated testing. We got Akash Thria, La Commodora, La Harpy, Lifeline, and Luminary. I can't wait to play some Luminary. I actually have been specifically <laughs> avoiding Luminary in my test games because I want to play him in a regular game, not an Oblivion game, because I want to get to know how he plays. Uh, because obviously, Baron Blade is a thing that I have cosplayed. Are you ready with separate background music? Uh, yeah, I've actually got, um, I turned the music off completely and I've just got uh, Time Cataclysm playing in the background because I figured that was the most cool. fitting. Yeah, uh, of course the new environments will have music, but uh, that will be revealed at the listening party at a later date. Indeed. All right, so... Do you have the stream going? Because I can hear myself softly like... Oh, I, I, I just turned it on to make sure the music was playing. <laughs> okay. And, I turned it, and then I just turned it back off again. That's interesting. Why did, I guess my headphones are up high enough that you can actually hear it vibrating through the headset. Yeah. That's interesting. Through your headbone. My headbone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to go super simple, easy for this game, and I'm going to play two of my go-tos. Well, we can go thematic with the villain here. And Ooh, bring the I was wondering if that's what you were going to do. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those who don't know... Uh, Akash Buta and Nexus of the Void. Um, in Spirit Island, I don't even know how to describe this, but I know that there is some sort of connection whereby the Nexus of the Void and Spirit Island are somewhat thematically connected via sort of the Void Spirit of Akash Buta. But that, I'm sure someone in the chat probably knows it better than I do, and you probably know it better than I do too, John. But uh, Yeah, I think there, in some form next to the void is spirit island but it's like in i think it's a one-sided relationship of some form headbone jeremy's a minbari there it is <laughs> i knew there was a, I, I was like where's i feel like there's a reference i could make here jcc was there in the clinch with the babylon 5 reference love it love it all right akash buta at next is the void versus the arjun adapt legacy the sentinels and tachyon Darren2500 asks, will we hear the Season 1 hero themes there? Uh, maybe one or two, but mm -hmm. our focus is on Oblivion. 
So not on the stretch goals at this point. Yes. Yeah. Once Oblivion is done, that's when Jamark will really. I mean, we've already he's already done some preliminary work on several of them, but yeah, don't expect those themes the day and date with Oblivion for sure. Another singing magician. I have eaten many of your kind. You're next. Your age with this chaos shall not destroy this world in this age. So you can see in the background here all the different parts of the next to the void clashing with each other. Yeah, so uh, Jennifer has been hard at work on the environments, and they are basically done at this point. So whatever you see in the background here is, in fact, the background for the next to the void. Uh, Arjun Adept opens with an arcane cadence and inspiring presence, uh, Scherzo of Frost and Flame, and Vernal Sonata. Legacy's got to bolster allies, heroic interception, superhuman durability, and surge of strength. Uh, the Sentinels open with good hero, bad hero, horrifying dichotomy, positive energy, and restorative burst. And Super Scientific Tachyon has got a couple of HUD goggles. She only needs one. Nimble Strike and Sucker Punch. Woo woo! Thanks, Pricey Provinces. Yeah, for subscribing. Pricey Provinces! Now, uh, Cheap States, where are you? <laughs> yeah, Pricey Provinces has gone out of his way to say hi to me at Gen Con at least last year, and I want to say the year before that as well. Or this past year, I should say. We're right at the cusp of the year, so my this year, next year, starts to get a little bit short-circuited right now. Like, I keep saying this year when I mean 2019, um, when in fact that is still next year, technically. Quite a tame start for a cash boot, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. I think I'm going to get started with an inspiring super tonic. See you, Brian the Wolf Hunt. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Whoa. I'm wondering what she's studying for that she'll be done in 10 minutes. Uh, Sentinel's test. Yeah, the Sentinel's test, exactly. I'll let Tachyon use needs power. Cool. I will use it on myself. My go-to's for Tachyons, for Super Scientific Tachyon, oh, nice, is um, either me or Unity. Unity is one that I really like to try because the, the prospect of getting two bots into play is really, really great. Um, the but, are excellent. Yeah, and, yeah, the Sentinels aren't bad. And then actually, from what I've read, again, I have not yet played Luminary, but the, the devices that Luminary has is a thing that I feel like could go really well with Super Scientific Tachyon. All right. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna do this because I wanna see what else I can draw because I've got my other card that's about to get played. Oh, another fleet of foot. <laughs> this is a great opening turn. I love it. And he can then play the fleet of foot. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, Jen Gro says, isn't Akash a bad villain to show how a new environment works? Uh. I don't know. It'll let us show a lot of environment cards. So that's yeah. probably a good thing, he right? plays extra cards and everything. Uh, I just realized this beer is uh, related to us because it's how we talk about our company name. The Candelaria. It's like Candelabra, but with an aria instead of an abra. Yeah. The Candelaria is our brewery. <laughs> it's a brewery here in Lima. We're also right near uh, Barranco, Barranco Brewing Company. I'm not good at rolling my R's. Yeah, Pricey Provinces, yeah. And if Tachyon's experiment fails, it just fuels his trash more. That's right, yes. I know that that is a thing. Like, he gets, there's a card he has that, like, lets him play devices from the trash, I want to say. Is that right, Luminary? Uh, he's up, like, he has cards that trigger on having 15 or more in the trash. Oh, oh, that. cool. All right. Yeah, I'm very excited to start pl trying Luminary, but I haven't Doomsday yet. Devices. You should play some Sentinels on the tabletop. I should. It'd be really great if I had or enough people to do that with. <laughs> you can play them in digital right now on beta. All right. Um, what do I want to do? Yeah, we'll start with Bolster Allies. Why not? We haven't drawn enough cards yet. Let's do that. And I drew another Bolster Allies. Good times. Bishop83 wants to know about the schedule for the rest of the month. Is that the streaming schedule, or is there another schedule you're talking about? Yeah, so as I was saying when we opened up, uh, the schedule for the rest of the month is a bit touch and go. Um, so definitely, you know, follow us on Twitter um, or Facebook, because that's when we'll be talking about specifically. Uh, the shows that actually would happen on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are either postponed or canceled, which I believe is uh, on deck. That's on deck. Um, and the rest of the show. I shows... might try to stream on 
December 25th and January 1st, but we'll see. Depends on internet connection and stuff like that. So right. we'll see. I will not, <laughs> will not be here on December 25th or January 1st. Uh, the next show that I will be on will be January 8th, I want to say. Um, but that doesn't mean that we won't have any stream. So Yeah, and Dolphin's Dive is on as usual, I think. And I think Zach's canceled both of them. I'm not sure 100%, but keep keep your eye on our info. Yeah. Uh, I guess I have to play a card. Yeah, we canceled, says Pirate Savvy. Yeah, Dolphin, Dolphin I think, is going to be doing what he needs to do because Dolphin is, is good about that kind of stuff. But, like, I have, you know, in the, the period between this Friday and January 2nd, so I think I've mentioned this on the stream before, my wife is the oldest of seven kids, and we will have at least four four potentially five of them in and out of staying at our house for the next two weeks so you know me being in the office streaming is not a thing that is going to happen very often uh, in the period well, well, and Dolphin's also not like scheduled to stream like on christmas so yeah. <laughs> uh yes actually i probably yeah uh, that was probably dumb i should have done that it's all right whatever yeah not a big deal you draw more yeah, cards. I'll keep it so I can draw another card this early in the game. It's fine. Um, and I'm actually going to do that just so I can get another burst of my trash with the hopes that I'll draw some more cool stuff. And uh, I'm going to use this on myself again. Nope, but I'll get another burst of my car in my trash, so that's good. And there's a light speed barrage and a lightning reflexes. Not too bad. Man, it almost feels simple looking at this game after I've played like five Oblivion <laughs> games in a row. It's like, what? One environment and one villain? What? All right, we got an environment card to look at. All right, let's pop that here. open. Void Slave, 9 HP target. Void Form Husk. This card is immune to melee and projectile damage. Whenever an ongoing card enters play, discard the top card of the environment deck. If the discarded card is a target, put it into play. If not, destroy the ongoing that just entered play. Interesting. Yeah, I have not played this environment at all yet, so this is interesting. <laughs> Seamus Butler says, you're a better man than me with that much family randomly showing up. Uh, I would find every opportunity to be out of the house. Yeah, they're actually, given the fact that we only see them once or twice a year, um, I tend to be pretty okay with it. Uh, especially because in my house, it's my house. So, like, I have my places that I can be where it's like if I want to find some time away I'll just find some time away it's so it's no big deal plus I'm very excited to introduce everybody to Beat Saber this uh, holiday season I have now taken to playing Beat Saber like 20 minutes a day as almost like a workout it is so good and so amazing uh, if you're if you're not sold on on VR this is the game that will sell you on VR it is so good <laughs> Oh, Still gonna look have at this. Tech kind of power now until I get Sentinel Tactics. Yeah, I'll keep doing my thing. Ooh, interesting. All right. Deal some damage. And supersonic response. I don't think... Oh, yeah, the Living Rock Slide. All right, I'll hit that. Yeah, and it's a good target to hit, so... Because it hits us. Yeah. <clears throat> and I will regain two hit points. Yeah, Citizen, seriously, it is so much fun. Like, like all you need to say is Guitar Hero, but with lightsabers. I mean, come <laughs> on. That is so great. Yeah, no, I hear you, Bishop. The, the cost of VR is not small. Uh, you know, the, the PlayStation VR is not a bad... Uh, situation. Oh, should I, I? You know what? I'm going to hang on to that bolster, Allies. I think I'm just going to thock that Living Rock slide here. Um, Probably sucker punch it on Tech Kid's turn. Oh, yeah. I guess I could have done that. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah, my biggest problem now is trying to find a way to not sweat into the VR headset because other people are going to have to use it at some point. So I've taken to like, I wear, I now I wear a um, sweatband and I put a bunch of paper towels on my forehead so that it doesn't soak <laughs> through to the um, to the headset. And that's a little bit gross, but what do you That do? still sounds gross. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm just gonna draw all the cards. All the cards. And a little bit more. Hey, more signatures. Still no Sentinel Tactics. Yeah, so I suspect that anybody who has problems with like going to see 3D movies would probably have similar issues with VR. And I don't know what to tell you about that. It's just the way it is. Um, I've always loved 3D cinema. Uh, in fact, I bought a projector that could do 3D and I have a dozen pairs of 3D glasses for people to watch 3D Blu-rays, which I still continue to buy despite the fact that I have to import them from the UK because apparently the US has decided that 3D Blu-rays are not a viable thing anymore. In fact, my uh, my Ant-Man and the Wasp 3D Blu-ray just shipped, so I'm excited to have that before Christmas. Yeah, VR is fun if, for me, uh, if it can work with my glasses, which isn't always the case. Yeah, that's definitely tricky. Uh, for a lot of people who, like, for their personal VR, they'll, like, get a system with prescription. Mm-hmm like set up to begin with but obviously if you have friends over that doesn't work so yeah well and i will say this will now that i'm over 41 i've noticed that like my phone i i have to like hold it like back which means i like the the laser surgery i had on my eyes to fix my farsightedness is now swinging in the other direction excuse me to, to fix my nearsightedness is now swinging in the other direction, so now I'm finding myself more farsighted. I'm having a hard time reading things that are close up, and I'm considering whether or not I want to um, get my eye lasered again so that I can not have to wear reading glasses or just accept the fact that I'm an old person and I have to wear reading glasses, <laughs> which may be what I have to do. Eventually, we'll just have robot eyes, right? That's, yeah, like, where's my Geordi LaForge visor thing? That's what I need. All right, should I? Uh, I feel like it's early to waste this Lightspeed Barrage on like an ar Arboreal Phalanges, but I could kill that Arboreal Phalanges right here. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's just do it. Okay, that hits Akash, and I'm gonna- Phalanges in the hand is worth two in the bush. Indeed. All right, and I will use this on myself again. There you go. Ooh, Take care of that environment card. Yeah, so let's quick insight first. Oh, another light speed barrage. Excellent. Ooh, and a sonic vortex. And a light speed barrage! Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna discard the two cards that I already have played. And then we'll get rid of that void slave. Good times. And we have accelerated assault and synaptic interruption. Alright, so let's see what the vo what the Nexus of the Void has for us here. We've got an Ember Dunes. So I just seen if you have trouble with 3D movies, you can buy uh, 3D movie glasses that have the same lens in both, both eyes, sides, so that yeah. uh, you still get to see the same dim movie that everyone else sees, which is <laughs> the crappiest part of 3D movies that's, that's so dim. Uh, but um, it won't give you a headache because you'll just see one half. Yeah, you just see one of them. All right, Ember Dunes. This is a biome. When this card enters play, destroy all other biomes. Whenever a target is dealt melee damage, deal that target one fire damage. At the end of the environment turn, deal each target one fire damage. Crispy. All right, so the carapace is going to be gone first, so that's good. Yeah, carapace first. And try to punch uh, Akash Buta with punching. That sounds good. Yeah, it was just that very last Harry Potter movie that was in 3D. I'm sorry that that was a frustrating experience for you, Citizen. Yeah, like uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, my 12-year-old likes 3D. My son really does not like 3D. So when we went to see the best superhero movie to come out in like a decade, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse last weekend, go see it right now, walk or run, do not walk. It it's was better amazing. Better than Wonder Woman? It was amazing. Like, it was, seriously, I cannot say enough good things about this. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I'll have to see it. It was, oh my god. It was, <laughs> like, imagine exactly. Avengers, but all Spider-Man, and not overly pretentious. I don't know, maybe that's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to say that. Because I really enjoyed all the Avengers movies, too. But, oh, 
like it had the exact right amount of like sort of self-deprecating, funny, goofy humor, meta-ness to it. Oh, and visually, it's indescribable. Like I think I tweeted about this. It should not have worked, but it did. Um, so definitely go see it. I really wanted to see it in 3D, but my son was like, no, I don't like 3D. So we saw it in 2D and that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go see it again and I'm definitely going to see it in 3D at some point. Uh, yeah, I, um, it's interesting. I went to see Aquaman, which was okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm, uh, I'm, I was curious about that. Cause I've heard it's like the second best DC movie beyond past you know I mean, it's a pretty low bar it is a low bar <laughs> but but still like the fact that it could be better than justice league or um either of the superman movies is an interesting thought i didn't see justice league but it was better than the superman movies okay. um I want to watch Justice League just to sort of see what I missed. Uh, Brittany yeah. watched it on the airplane and said it was bad. I, I did that. I watched it on, it was on like HBO Now or Go or whatever. So I finally right. just watched it and I was like, all right. I mean, yeah, it was okay. Uh, yeah, but um, Aquaman was fine. I It kind of reminded me, like my feeling about it was similar to when I first saw Thor, which is like, that was fine. Yeah. I actually like Thor a lot more now. Like. I enjoy like I want to rewatch Thor more than I want to rewatch other things sometimes, but like um, that's my that was my initial feeling about Aquaman. I so. just love the fact that like Jason Momoa is the king of Atlantis, and like what put him on the map was the fact that he was like the heavy on Stargate Atlantis. <laughs> like that, I, I there's some weird like I don't know well, there's something I about think that. His that... great real big breakout was Game of Thrones. He, okay, that was his breakout, but the thing that put him on the map was the fact that he was the teal of Stargate Atlantis. And I realize that you didn't watch Stargate until later, but like, I wa that Stargate Atlantis was the first Stargate series that I actually watched seriously, and so that's how I know who that guy is. And yeah, I don't know if anyone's on a map from Stargate, like, but yeah, sure, I get what you're saying. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like Stargate, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah <laughs> I'm just saying like he would not have been cast on Game of Thrones if he was not on Stargate and that is I, I don't know about that fight me <laughs> <laughs> don't at me that is yeah oh yeah Conan okay okay Conan yes he was like he was a Conan for like a half a minute Conan. Uh, anyways yeah so Aquaman has some really 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 amazing graphics yeah. Um, uh, that are just impressive just for that. Like the underwater city and all that stuff is really, really cool. Man, but like, even with all of the CG advances and advances in people being good at making things look good, like making humans move around underwater as if they're Atlanteans, not convincing at mm. all. All right. <laughs> like, there's a reason that is like it works in the comic books because they're not moving. <laughs> they're not moving, yeah. Yeah, but, I like I, just no, not it's just too I really about. like from the trailers, I really appreciated the fact that they didn't bother trying to like at least in the trailers explain how they could talk to each other underwater as if they were just talking. It seemed like, yeah, just let that be a thing. That's fine. And that's, you know, I don't know. The the movies that were interesting to me this holiday season in order of whatever were Star or, um Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, Bumblebee, and then like a distant third was Aquaman. Hmm. So I've seen Spider-Verse. Uh, I have plans to see Bumblebee. You know, the G1 stuff that's happening in those trailers tells me that like, I, I, I can easily forget that Transformers 2 through 5 happened if Bumblebee is good. And I've heard, I would I've heard it's pretty good. No, I like Transformers 1. That's one of those ones that I bought on HD DVD and then again on Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I'm going to a Transformers movie unless, like, I hear otherwise from anyone who actually, like, I didn't like any. I think I, I only watched the first movie, but I know I would hate all of the other movies. So. Yeah, the second one was the one I watched in the theaters, and I had that moment where I was sitting in the theater, I'm like, this is disgusting and racist, right? I'm, I'm not crazy. Like, this is actually disgusting and racist, right? And everyone around me seemed to be having fun, and I was like, I don't understand. And then I never saw any of the other ones in theaters. I think I watched them... Pro I mean, I've seen at least three and four. 
I fell asleep trying to watch five when it was like free on Netflix. So I only have seen like the first half of that one. Um, but uh, the early buzz on Bumblebee is that it's actually pretty good. So I'm, I'm excited. And it's a prequel. It, it takes place before the first one. So mm. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, the trailer looks fine. Like actually looks like Transformers, unlike all of the Transformers movies, including the first one that you like. Right. Um, so. <gasps> Colossus says, saw an advanced screen in Bumblebee last weekend, and it was great. Woo! Thank you, Colossus. Like, like the, the people that I listen to that I trust seem to think that it's pretty good. All right, hang on. We got a cool. new biome coming in. Let's well, take we'll a see. look. And I would like to see uh, the Spider-Man one, but I think it's going to be dubbed here everywhere mm. because it's animated. So right. it's going to be harder for me to watch. All right, so we've got Taiga Burning Bright. This is a biome. When this card enters play, destroy all other biomes. So that's why the, the last one went out. Increase all fire and cold damage by one. Melee damage is converted to cold damage. Projectile damage is converted to fire damage. Interesting. Just like the Tunguska Blast of 1914. Mm -hmm. Yes, where melee damage was converted to cold damage. Exactly right. Uh, interesting. Uh, that is something that the Argent Adept enjoys. So I'm going to deal some damage with Argent Adept. JCC, I want you to know that I see you. That that movie is practically perfect in every way. Well done. <laughs> I have absolutely, despite the fact that I love Emily Blunt, I have absolutely no interest in the sequel, reboot, whatever this is of... Um, uh, Mary Poppins. I think it could. I don't, know, I, I don't know if there's anything it could do other than tread on the legacy of the original. And again, this is coming from someone who absolutely loves Emily Blunt. Like, I thought that her turn in uh, Edge of Tomorrow was amazing. Um, I don't think I've seen her in a role that I didn't think she did a fantastic job in. But I just, I'm not at all interested in an update to Mary Poppins. <sighs> all right, what do I want to do here? Um, yeah, all right, given where <laughs> we're at at the game, I think I'm just going to Surge of Strength and then Galvanize and hopefully be ready to do some more damage later. They are saying it's a sequel. Yeah, it is a, it's a sequel slash soft reboot. Like, I, and this is how I've heard it described. Like, yes, I know that it is, in fact, the same quote-unquote kids from the original, and they're all grown up. But my understanding is that they sort of pseudo-reboot some of the stuff about Mary Poppins, some of the universe of Mary Poppins. The cinematic, the Mary Poppins cinematic universe, the Mary as it were. Poppins cinematic universe. Is that a thing that... My, my, favorite, my favorite thing about this is the idea that, like, Mary Poppins is a secret Slytherin. Um, that is a thing that I am totally on board for because she is like, uh, I'm not even going to go to it. Just Google Mary Poppins is a secret Slytherin and you'll find all the great stuff about it. And as a Slytherin, I support it. So I'm going to use, this is something that you don't see every day. <laughs> the MPCU. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess it's, I don't know if that's worth doing. I'm thinking of using telekinetic, actually it's the same amount of damage. So I'm gonna use telekinetic wallop. I'm not choosing idealist, I'm gonna choose mainstay because it's going to be converted to cold mm. and mainstay has his own plus one. And so it's gonna be the same amount of dam damage as if it was psychic. Nice. I'm idealist. And I can choose uh, Rise here and get the Caligonus form through for just one damage, but hey, it's something. And I'm gonna have to block again. I think I'm gonna block again because bad things can happen when you don't block. Right, that point in an Akash Buta game where you're like, ah, everything's just fine. We're winning, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then we <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, like I'm trying to avoid that hypersonic assault. 
So I'll definitely I mean, start with the synaptic could, interruption. Why not, then if you're going to use, use it, now's a good time. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, hit the mountainous carapace first. Or you could just Sonic Vortex for a yeah. similar effect. Yeah. And then I will do this. Target Rise. Also Target Rise. Okay. Look at all this bouncing damage. And... Uh, yeah, I'll just do it again. But don't target right again. <laughs> don't target right again? Or do target right again? It only works once. Yeah, it only works once, I thought. Okay. Alright, so let's do this again. Oh, well, another burst in the trash, that's fine. I don't know. Actually, do I have any more? I think I've used all the things that can use it. All right, what do we get here? Oh, a couple things. All right, so... Elemental Awakening. At, this, at the end of the environment turn, reveal the top three cards of the environment deck. Put any revealed targets into play. Discard the other revealed cards. At the start of the environment turn, if there are at least two spirits in play, destroy this card. So that's Elemental Awakening. And then we've got Devouring River, which is a 6, six HP target, which is a spirit. The first time a biome enters play each turn, the car, this card deals the three non-spirit targets with the lowest HP, two cold damage each. Uh, remember, we have a card in play that increases cold damage, I think. At the end of the environment turn, discard the top card of the environment deck. If it is a biome, put it into play. So, interesting stuff. All right, and then uh, we got an Allies of the Earth. Staring Brambles. A slumbering Serpent comes into play. Let's take a look at that. Oh, wait. Hang on. Let me read that first. Uh, Spirit, when this card enters play, remove 8 HP from it. Each time a spirit or a biome enters or leaves play, this card regains 1 HP. At the end of the environment turn, if this card is at full HP, it deals the two villain targets with the highest HP, two toxic, and two radiant damage. Interesting. Those are at least at least one mechanic that we have not seen before on <laughs> any card in the game. So that's pretty cool. Jade Estuary. That's a biome. I'm assuming it's going to get rid of the other one. Let's take, let's read that real quick. Uh, when this card enters play, destroy all other biomes. At the end of the environment turn, each non-hero target with an even amount of HP regains 2 HP. Uh, then each hero with an even amount of HP may use a power. Interesting. Good for us. Yeah. All right. And which card should take? River and Slumbering Serpent are both interested in this. Um, the first time a biome enters play each turn, the this card deals with three non-spirit targets with the lowest HP damage, and Slubbering Serpent is going to regain each hit points. So I don't think the order super matters here. And yeah, let's choose the Carapace. <laughs> Murder River. <laughs> JCC says, Nexus is weird in that it does a lot of converting damage, so maybe there's a bug with the animation. Uh, that could be possible. Did, did it show an animation that was, like, the wrong damage type? I don't know. But yeah, each hero with an even amount of hit points can use a power, so why don't Legacy go first and increase I like damage? It. I like it. Uh, then I can use Medico's power and give Tachyon an even amount of hit points. It showed a melee animation with a cold sound effect. And this might be... If Tachyon doesn't get to use a power here, that's a bug. Let's see. Oh, she does get to use a power. Huzzah! Uh, do we want Tachyon to go first? Sure. Uh, does Do the Sentinels want this, or should I just keep using it on myself? Uh, whatever you like. All right. I'm going to be selfish. Ooh, nice. All right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'll hit the carapace. Double galvanize. And 
Rise can go. Let's look at a Kush Buddha's deck. Uh, I can go in the trash. Idealist can do some damage. If you vote. Oh, I remember bed knobs and boom. I, well, I remember that bed knobs and broomsticks is a thing. I don't remember much beyond that. Yeah, Angela Lansbury, definitely. I haven't watched right, it in everyone, 20 years. Almost everyone has used their powers. <laughs> so I don't really need to give anyone else power. Uh, or heal. And it's going to do damage. Because that's what Arjun Adept is best at. Destroy our ongoing cards. Well, you can yeah, always that's play fine. another Pushing the Limits. And you probably have just played Surge of Strength to do something. Uh, let's see what is going on with Arjun Adept. I can lose an ongoing here, or a couple. I have other things to do. Alright, so the Nexus has shuffled, which flips Akash Pata. Okay. Do we want someone to play a card. That's always fun. Yeah. Let's have this animals play a card. Because I might get the card I'm looking for. Oof, team communication. So good. I didn't get the card I'm looking for, but I got good cards, so... And I have all the signature cards in my hand, but I can at least draw and play, so... <laughs> JCC, reasons why I got into singing. Disney musicals and 80s cartoons. <laughs> nice. What's this biome doing? Yeah, it's just healing us, so. Yeah, it's not doing bad stuff. Uh, sure. So speaking of Disney, uh, my family and I are actually going to Disney and Universal in Florida in March for spring break this year. And I had a half an hour call with a Disney travel agent guide person today like going to disney is not like going anywhere else in the world <laughs> like it is insane the planning that is required to go to disney uh like you know we've been to king's with, island with, like four kids <laughs> yeah with three kids exactly right so it's like all right like on your own i don't think it's an insane amount of planning right but it's like all right so there's the magic kingdom there's epcot there's animal planet there's Hollywood Studios. There's two different uh, water parks. And it's like, all right, which characters do you want to meet? When do you want to meet them? Which parks do you want to go to? What rides do you want to go on? And by the way, we also want to do the Harry Potter stuff at Universal. It is, uh, it's like a crazy nonsense situation. But it's, I, I'm very excited because there's all kinds of cool stuff I want to do. But it is, oh my goodness. Like, if I had to do this all by myself, I would be confused and concerned and lost. Would you be outraged that I went to Orlando and didn't go to Disney? Uh, not at all. I've been <laughs> I've been to Orlando and not gone to Disney. We actually... So, when we went to... We no, went on a, any theme park. 
We went on a Disney cruise, and I... 90% sure we flew into Orlando and then we had to take a bus from somewhere. Maybe it was Miami. I don't remember. But we stayed at like a hotel for one night there because my mom has this thing about never flying on the same day you board the boat on a cruise. So we stayed at like the, uh, what the heck was it? The Nickelodeon Hotel, which had like, you know, a quote unquote water park, which is basically just like, you know, in the hotel. And that was fine. Um, but yeah, we did not go to any sort of theme parks while we were there. But then we boarded a boat, which is basically a theme park on water, so it is what it is. Right. Mm. Yeah, you have Sucker Punch, you can take it that brambles with that, so. Sure. Juice Bot lives in Orlando and doesn't go to Disney. Yeah, I went to Orlando, like, for a few days before our first PAX Australia. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, like, uh, then uh, Brittany and I were there for a couple, a few days, and we went to, like, we did some uh, stuff around Orlando uh, that was interesting. Uh, and then uh, her brother came, and they uh, all went to theme parks and stuff while I went to Australia. Uh, let's see. Was that when you and me went to Australia? Yep. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. That's we met up in LAX. Yep. And went to Australia. And we flew to Australia on the 797 Dreamliner. We did. It was glorious. It was. <laughs> it 770, was 70, 7, 77, 787. Whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. It was as yes. glorious as being stuck in a metal tube for 14 hours can possibly be. <laughs> yeah, but it was like actually comfortable. I think. Yeah, it was not as bad as it could have been. That is for sure. All right, so let's get rid of that ensnaring brambles. Sure. All right. Um. Yeah, I'll do this. You could like uh, blinding speed the dividing river, which is not helping us. All right. Yeah, I was going to ask us. if I should be maybe looking at one of those, but it's fine. The Slumbering Serpent is good for us, but... Ooh. Well, it's not going to deal damage anyways, <laughs> because you're going to hit yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to hit it. All right, so we get a Lightning Reflexes, Sonic Vortex. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this and this. And I'm hit all the things. I think Sparky Wolf said you're a cool parent, so good job. Oh, thanks. I try. Yeah, I will say the biggest question in our discussion this morning was, do we buy the wands before we go to Harry Potter? <laughs> Or do we wait and go through, like, the whole wand ceremony at the park to get our wands there? <laughs> and we ended up landing on we are going to get them ahead of time so that we don't have to wait in line to do the wand ceremony. And that'll be part of their uh, the kids' Christmas present this year is getting their Harry Potter wands. How do you not have your wands already, said <laughs> Okay, okay, Seamus Butler, the reason we don't have wands already is exactly this, because we knew we were going to be going to the Harry Potter world at some point, and it was like, should we maybe do the thing? How many cards do you even have in your deck? Actually, I should say this. I think my oldest daughter actually... Oh, you reshuffled. <laughs> yeah. My oldest daughter actually has a wand, but it was not. it's not one of like the super official ones. So we're gonna, yeah, she's gonna end up with two wands. I don't, I don't know. Wands are, yeah. Oh, new card, thank you. All right, so yeah, shifting bloom, biomes. Thank you, uh, Genigro. Uh, so shifting biomes, biomes are indestructible. At the end of the environment turn, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until a biome is revealed. Put it into play, discard the other revealed cards, then destroy this card. So this obviously sort of circumvents the when a biome comes into play, destroy all other biomes situation. 
But first, we are doing all the things. I'm gonna let someone play a card. Who? I don't know. This game seems really easy. <laughs> uh, legacy? Sure. You could play takedown, and then the cash but I can't play cards sure. or do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah, I was a latecomer to Harry Potter as well. I didn't get into it. Like, I went to see the first couple movies. I didn't actually start reading the books until the fourth movie was coming out. And then I was like, all right, I kind of like this. Let's see what the books are all about. And then I read the books to get caught up. And then, um, so I'd seen the fourth movie. And then I read the first four or five books. And then I was sort of all caught up. But yeah, I didn't get the craze either. But um, I don't know. I get it now, especially with kids. Like, all of my kids are really into, you know, sort of, oh, what's going to happen? You know, my youngest one, I'm reading the book. I'm reading book two with her now, and she's super excited to find out what happens next. So. I watched the movies, and they were okay science fiction or, or okay fantasy movies. Yeah, okay fantasy, in my yeah. opinion. They were not notable. But I understand the hype. I'm just not at all interested. Yeah, I would say that I think Harry Potter is a pretty interesting, unique cultural touchstone, which is that I don't think you're getting the full experience if you only read the books or only watch the movies. I think you kind of have to do both to get all of it because the movies by themselves don't give you the whole story. They're a good story from beginning to end, but they don't give you everything. To me, the books feel a lot like the sort of end notes to the movie so like if you've read all the books and then you watch the movies you get everything that's happening in the movies but you also have the the added context that comes from knowing all the backstory and i think that that is a really interesting thing that hasn't really existed before because like in my head the canonical version of the characters are the movie portrayals like you know alan rickman as snape is the canonical snape and what he does is snape and the story of snape is so moving that I cry even just thinking about it, and I'm gonna try not to right now. It's gonna be okay. But <laughs> having just read Are you the books, this is the first time the book has more information than the movie. Say it again. You're saying there's a movie that's good, uh, but the book has more to it. That's not really new. No, no, that's not new. That's not but I don't think the book by itself, like I was not as moved by the books by themselves as I was by the books supplemented by the movies. Like, that's what I'm saying, is, like, Alan Rickman's performance as uh, Snape brings more to the character from the books than the books had alone, but you can't get that from the movies unless you've also read the books. So it's sort of like a virtuous cycle. Like, you need both yeah, to really get the it seems experience. Yeah, you just exactly described Lord of the Rings. Oh, my God, yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Lord of the Rings, I think, is exactly the same, especially because I could not get through the books of Lord of the Rings. I've tried <laughs> reading them a dozen times, and I've never gotten past, like, five chapters into it, and I'm like, oh, my God, enough already. But, like, after watching the movies, it was like, oh, I get it now. So I could I could see that applying to Lord of the Rings as as well. Uh, Bluey says I was one of those watching the movies uh, mad that Tom Bombadil was not in the movie. <laughs> I was fine that Tom, Tom Bombadil was not in the movie, and I read the books and I know about Tom Bombadil, and I'm glad he was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like from what I've understood, the idea of what Tom Bombadil was could not have fit in the movies in a way that would have made it not ridiculous yeah yeah and i will say there was something that went around on, on on twitter or facebook or something a few years ago that was like what is your sort of like geek guilty admission and mine was that like a really complex uh fantastical world i much prefer reading the wikipedia entry to learn about it than reading the actual source material and that's kind of how i feel about the Lord of the Rings. Like, I, I understand that the Lord of the Rings stories and The Hobbit and The Silmarillion and all those things are overly fantastic. Just give me the Wikipedia entry. I just want to know the facts and the history and the whatever, and then that's enough. That's enough for me. That's kind of how well, I Louis agrees it. about Tom Bombadil now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I can get it at the... Like, if you were, like, a diehard Lord of the Rings fan over the years and then the movie shows up missing like what is a significant character in the book that makes sense even though it's not actually important to the story really 
And I, you know, and I will say this too. I think some of my opinion about this stuff is probably informed by the fact that I was a huge Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fan. And so as a result, like I read the books and I watched the BBC series and I listened to the radio drama. And if you know anything about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know that each of those, as well as the movie from 2012, 11, 13, whatever it was, um, are so vastly different. They are completely different takes on the same general idea of a story. Yeah, but they're intentionally that way. Exactly, exactly. That, yeah. And and that's the thing. Like some so so many people are like, oh, those first two Harry Potter movies were basically filming the book as a screenplay, and that's what all adaptations should be. And that's not really the thing. And if you've seen or enjoyed the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know that adapting a story for the medium that it is going into can can give something that is different than the original but still equally valid and interesting i think that shaped a lot of my understanding of how narrative can be sort of adaptationally and i think you know given that our company is an adaptation company and our job is to take a tabletop games and tournament video games you know what is um what is sort of um brought over from the tabletop is the core of what makes something fun but you know playing sentinels digitally is different than playing it physically but that doesn't mean that you're not having the same experience you're not enjoying it in the same kind of a way and i think that that a lot of that that's informed a lot of how i feel about um adaptation i think i like the hitchhiker's guide movie as well Bellowy. and i also like the really cringy bbc tv series yep yep <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't checked out the uh, Movies with Mikey did on YouTube, search Movies with Mikey Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, he did a really great um, review slash whatever of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie. And I think it's a really, really great uh, discussion of that because it, it, it touches on exactly the same stuff that we're talking about here. Like, what is adaptation? Um, how does it change? Wh how does it, what does it mean? Um, are any of these environment cards ones that we want to get rid of? Uh, I mean, the Devouring River isn't doing any good so okay. if you want to get rid of that you can but not a huge that. priority i just i don't have anything else super useful to do so i figured i'd get rid of sure. that sure guess that will play the top credit on deck but that's fine something that's, more yeah to that's punch. fine yeah more things to punch so we can kill, <laughs> kill a gosh buddha ah uh, you lose your light speed barrage wah, wah, wah. JCC points out with Adams, less he wants properly at properly made adaptations, and more he's a massive troll. That's true. He was a massive troll. <laughs> he totally was. <laughs> That's good times. Yeah. Ah, uh, look how many powers we get to use. I made sure Legacy has even hit points again. All right, Citizen. It's not about car chases. It's about getting the information in the most. Uh, boiled down possible scenario. Hmm. Unless you, unless you're saying that like reading the Wikipedia page is like an action movie, <laughs> I don't think it really is. Right. I want to have the idea of deal damage before I heal her. <laughs> the humor is too English. Yeah, so I think so many powers. <laughs> I have to double up with the friendly teasing. That's fine, Citizen. I have no. I I can take it. Don't you worry. Yeah, I. It's it, you know, it's one of those things where like, I'm. I understand that I exist in. Oh yeah, Sentinels. Take it away. Um, I I know that no I problem. that culture is moving forward in an unceasing wave and so like i want to introduce my kids to like the hitchhiker's guide books but i understand that it's going to hit them differently than it hit me when i was you know a 10 year old they might and, not get it at all yeah in the <laughs> 1980s exactly and like i actually wrote a thing like my i think the the line that probably struck me the most in the original hitchhikers was the line that like um, the, Vo the yellow Vogon constructor ships hung in the air in much the same way bricks don't. That line stuck with me more than anything, I think. And so that it was that level of humor that was the kind of thing that, that, that sort of like... It was taking the idea of language and playing with it in a way that I'd never seen before. And I remember I specifically wrote 
uh, something in a creative writing class when I was like in seventh grade or eighth grade, and I said something like, it was deadly in the way, in, you know, not in the way that a gun is deadly, but in the way that a brick wall across an interstate is deadly, you know? And like, I was trying to ape what he was doing, but not quite getting it. And like, that's <laughs> what I want to show my kids. But if they're not going to get it in the same way that I got it back in the late eighties, I get that. Like, that's fine. But it was just one of those things that I, I've always really wanted to be able to convey and whether I can do it or not is an open question, but we'll see. I've, I've shown my oldest daughter the, the first book. I don't know if she's read it yet, but I gave it to her and it was like, if you want to try this, go for it. If not, I get it. All right. That's so many powers. This is almost like cheating this environment card. <laughs> Let's see what Akash Buddha has. I... We don't even have that many equipment cards, but let's get rid of that. Don't want it. And now, uh, yeah. Let's have everyone play more cards. Silver Shadow. Who wants to play a card? Um, I don't know that I have anything I want to play necessarily. Eh, I don't know. Pick it. I mean, the Sentinels can always do a bunch of damage, so... Go for it. They are happy to do that. I can't. And I can also heal up... Uh, Tack you on a whole bunch. Play a card. Silver Shadow. Let the Sentinels play a card. Uh, I think I'll just do the same thing. Tachyon is at maximum hit points after being down to 10. So I'm trying to find a video that I uploaded to YouTube forever ago, but YouTube is not a thing. Like, why is it not showing me all the videos that I've uploaded? YouTube has been deleted. And I don't uh, care to use that other company, so I will use this. And then we all take a fire damage. There it is. All right. So this is a video that I made. I'm gonna post it in here. Feel free to watch it now or watch it later. Well, I don't think the order matters here. Unless we want the serpent to regain hit points, it doesn't really matter. All right, Akash Buddha has helpfully played exactly two cards to help us uh, win. Yeah, so that video that I just linked to is like one of the very first like pseudo YouTube mashup thingies I ever posted. It's on my like personal channel, not on any like handle or anything. And it's a mashup of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Star Trek, Star Wars, The Matrix, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, you should check it out. I'm very, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. And it's got a whopping 1,259 views, so. Well, that's gonna go up now. Yes. 
with my with our crazy 23 live viewers that we have right now. <laughs> I guess I will have the Arjun Adept deal 12 damage. How will I do that, you say? I won't have him deal it. I'll make Akash Buddha deal it. Yeah, 23 live and 100 after. Exactly. Thank you, Brian the Wolf Hunt. Kaboom! Destroy the failing. Yeah, so JCC says, I'm always weirded out when anything I liked as a kid is still going. What about when anything you liked as a kid has been rebooted is now going again, like Voltron? My son is like, hey, there's new episodes of Voltron on, on Netflix. And I'm like, new episodes of Voltron? Voltron. That was great. I like it. Yeah, he loves it. I haven't watched any of the new ones, but like I remember loving it when I was a kid. It was like Voltron and Silverhawks and Tiger Sharks and... Uh, Thundercats. Those were all the, the shows that I watched back then. I don't know if any of those are real except Thundercats. Tiger Sharks is apps or <laughs> Street Sharks? Tiger Sharks? Street Sharks? Tiger what? Shark is a kind of shark. Tiger Sharks. I swear to God it was a thing. Tiger Sharks. Street Sharks. Is that what you're thinking of? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. All right, Akash has four hit points. Can you do it? Uh, yeah, yeah no. You have no cards. Yeah, you Legacy yourself. cannot. But <laughs> I can. I can make it so the Sentinels can. The Sentinels always can. They can fling into darkness. Yes, Tiger Sharks is an American animated children's TV show developed by Rankin Bass and distributed by Lorimar Telepictures in 1987. I did not make that up. All right. Well, that's a deep cut. It resembled then. the series Thundercats and Silverhawks. Thank so, you. So it's like Thank a, you. a knockoff show. All three of those were a real thing that I watched. All right. I'm going to fling Living Rock Slide into darkness and make Akash Buta freak out about it. I mean, Thundercats was clear, clearly the one that everybody knew about. Yeah. I never watched it because I was in Canada. It didn't happen. But. You're not hearing the victory music because I have music muted because I have other music going because the environment don't have music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's giving you the exact same experience of winning, right? You know what it is. You know how it goes. All right, so we did it. Well, I guess and assume maybe the only someone's watching who's only ever lost. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, don't know fair. what the winning music is. That that could happen. Possible. All right, All right. Should we play a game that we should lose? Um, I, I guess. I think we, we should play, play in the same environment again because tonight is the in, All right. the, the night of the environment. Same environment, but viewer's choice on the villain to make us lose. All right. All right. So. so First villain, two, three votes. And we'll play on ultimate, whatever it is. Ooh, ultimate. Good yeah. times. But we get to pick a team to try to win. Okay, yeah. All right, so I We're see we got like Iron Legacy, most information. Heroic Infinidor, Skinwalker Gloomweaver. Choke point. They want to play a long game. Oh, Vito, Skinwalker. <laughs> Two for Infinidor. Interesting. Two for Choke Point. All right, so we've got two for Infinidor and two for Choke Point. So if you, uh, the new season of Voltron came out um, last week or this week, and um, it has a reference to the original Voltron show. That's oh, pretty nice. funny. We have no more votes. 
we can't proceed. <laughs> we'll just sit here and stare at you until you vote. JZC can vote for something. Cytosine could vote for something. John's video is frozen. Yes. Janagro could vote. Seamus Butler, I know you're watching. I know you're here. Choke point! All right, it should be better. All right, cool, choke point, excellent. All right, so let's look at what ultimate choke point does. Uh, she makes the player with the most cards in hand put one card from their hand face down in the villain area at the end of the turn. Whenever a non-villain card is destroyed, it's put face down the villain play area. Whenever a card is put face down the villain play area, she regains two hit points and deals each hero target two energy damage. So any hero that relies on destroying their own cards is really difficult against choke point here. Um, and also, um, and then on the flip side, uh, the first time a hero card will be discarded each turn, it's put face down instead, which also triggers her thing. So preventing her from healing is good. Preventing her from dealing damage is good. Um, so we're going to want heroes that can do that uh, and don't rely on like discarding cards or destroying cards. Right. Uh, Unity might not be a great choice. That's fine. I'm sticking with like, it. Like, she 100% relies on those things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking with it. I, maybe I'll do a different one. I'll do... Um, let's see. Maybe... Yeah, I'll do the one or where like I hit myself. Patriot would be a tough choice, too, because of destroying ammo cards, for example. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go bring a Rise so he can prevent uh, healing, which might be really important. Uh, but I'm gonna bring Cosmic Inventor, uh, who can, who isn't as interested in the Shadow Cloak as Basic Rise. Uh, Chrono Ranger, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do Chrono Ranger with the idea of hoping to get some bounties on her to boost some damage. All right, and then we need a debuff on her as well. Um, so potentially Wraith with Stun Bolt uh, and Throat Jabs, that's a pretty good call actually, so. Um, yeah, regular Wraith. All right, I think Unity is a bad choice, but if you want to do that, you can do that. Yeah, I don't know. I, there's something about like taking the Techno Mage against the weird Techno like something that feels like it works for me so now aren't you an oddity come child you must know you belong to me let yourself go i can hear your voice in my head it calls to me but not to me as a person just to parts of me uh Balawi, regular choke point is not that hard but a lot of the easier villains challenge modes make them really hard yeah all right so unity opens with a brainstorm uh hasty augmentation inspired repair and a raptor bot uh, Rive has got a Concealed Assailant, a uh, couple of Fighting Fades, and an Umbral Siphon. Uh, Chrono Ranger has got By Any Means, which I was looking for, Dead or Alive, Eye on the Prize, and Terrible Tech Strike. And Wraith has got Combat Stance, Grappling Hook, Razor Ordnance, and Smoke Bombs. Cool. Uh, Rive will be helpful for Unity. I can use my power on her to let her put bots into play for one hit point. Nice. Instead of four. I guess he could have gone first, but that's okay. We are all being dealt damage, and this is actually better. It's better for her to be hitting us than to put cards in her area, <laughs> generally. All right, we need someone to put a card face down in the area. So someone who has a card they don't care about. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, guess could be the Wraith. Yeah, that was not me That's voting. It. That was me just clicking. So, um, yeah, Wraith's fine. Well, we've already taken a bit of a beating. All 
right. Ooh, drop power shock wave and that. Okay, good. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm throwing caution to win this game. I don't even care. Ooh, look at all those supply crates. Yeah, just let me use them. But don't destroy them. I'll grab the shadow cloak. Oh yeah, challenge ambuscade is it. no joke. I can play another card. I'm gonna play Umbral Siphon and keep her from healing. So if we can do like enough damage to her. We can outpace kill her before she can yeah. She won't be healing, so we can kill her before she kills us, basically. <laughs> Alright, so we'll start with dealing her a little bit of damage, drawing a temporal grenade, and then I'm going to buy any means on her. And displaced armory, interesting. It's good. Ah! You What's happening? There's a phone here that, like a landline that I'm not interested in. I don't know why there exists. Land <laughs> line? Well, it's like, it, it's, it goes on a, um, like it's an IP phone, but it's like an actual phone. It's like, what is this foolishness? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's calling the migrant hotline! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure it's just telemarketers. Every time I've picked it up, it's been a telemarketer. Inside. Yeah, I actually so. read an article recently that was like, you know, based on the data, statistically speaking, don't ever answer your phone. <laughs> it is never someone you want to talk to. <laughs> like 80% of the time, it is a telemarketer, it is spam. Phone calls, Shocking. voice phone calls have officially become useless. Um, this could go on, I'm thinking, like, tracking animation. We can put it on Razor Ordinance and then, like, get rid of it. Or, like, it's, it's, it's good to put on stuff that, like, we're going to get rid of anyways, mm. but I don't want, like, the Shadow Cloak to end up on by choke point, so... Uh, we can put it by Razor Ordinance if it ends up hitting us. All over. right. Uh, and then the Reclusive Keeper is... Oh, and then actually, yeah, it's, the damage is reduced by two because of the Reclusive Keeper. I don't know if you brought that up yet. I have not. Let's bring that up. Reclusive Keeper. This is a new one. It's a 12 HP target spirit. The first time a non-environment target enters play each turn, this card deals that target two melee damage, reduce damage dealt by that target by two until the start of the environment turn. At the start of the well, environment you, turn... You, you, <laughs> if there are three or more spirits in play, destroy this card. This is really good for Unity. Uh, and so Razor Ordinance is going to try to deal us all two damage, uh, but it can't because it's reduced. So you need to move a card to her play area. Done. And now she's going to destroy... Your raptor bot that you so lovingly placed. Yeah, it happens. And she's going to do more damage. This is how she chains. This is why Unity was a bad idea. At least Unity will be incapacitated soon and stop causing us trouble. <laughs> At least we have that. My kingdom for a throat jab. Um, 
Hmm. Your best bet is hasty augmentation to let someone else do something. Yeah, useful. that's what I was just looking at. Um. Like writhe. Writhe. Okay. Oh shoot! I clicked the wrong thing. Hang on. The other writhe. Yeah, I saw wraith, and I yeah. Sparky Wolf says, when I get those, I act like a Chinese restaurant and act like they're ordering for the person they're looking for. <laughs> I have not thought of that. I might try that. Hmm. Yeah, it still needs to be Umbral Siphon. Keep her from getting hit points. And also do piles of damage. <laughs> Chipping away. Yep. I mean, she's Thanks, more than Teen half the way there, King. so... For subscribing. Hey, Teensy's Kig, thank you. Thank you. Since I'm traveling, I get different phone numbers all the time, and uh, I've had one where the police kept calling looking for someone, which is interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I would play smoke bombs, but I want you to get knocked out, so I'm not <laughs> going to do that. That's how John feels about interns, just so everybody's clear. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever put out a call for interns, you know how John feels. <laughs> Citizen says, oh, there's someone who has the same name as me who's apparently never paid a, pay a bill in their life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm relatively lucky. We So because of the way that we did things, when my wife and I lived in Milwaukee, we had a we started with VoIP. Uh, I don't remember who it's through. But so our, our actual home phone number is technically a Milwaukee number now but we like added a cleveland number to it so like we don't get we do get occasionally like oh random you know milwaukee like hey this is a political slash local slash whatever you know spam call but we don't get any of them from our local area which has actually worked out pretty well for us so all right hang on might be the turn where we live. yeah we got void slave and slumbering shirt yeah so we didn't get any new cards that we haven't seen yet. Oh wait, Elemental Awakening, did we talk about that? Oh, we did talk about that already, yeah. We did. Yeah, okay, cool. Black Chibi Sun asks, so how long before we can expect to get Oblivion on Steam? Uh, as long as it takes. <laughs> as long as it takes. We are working on it now. It is in beta testing. And um, I mean, early next year is the current sort of estimate. Early meaning, I don't know decide what you what you want about early but it is you know it's coming along um you know we're, we're starting to preview the content here on the stream um you can ask your fellow uh watchers how long it usually takes for us to get stuff out once we start previewing it on the stream but um you know oblivion is a huge undertaking um you know it's not just new heroes and new villains like uh void guard or mini pack four were so i would definitely expect that there's going to be a lot of bug hunting and bug testing to be had um but you know it's we're working on it we're working as hard as we can uh we have to put equipment face down and we're probably everyone's gonna die <laughs> 
Uh, I really don't want to put either of these cards in the villain play area. I really don't. But Umbral Siphon, I guess, because I only have one Shadow Cloak. Oh, I, I thought it was a, from every play area. Yeah, for, oh, it, each each other one only had one each, so it automatically chose them. And then Wraith is down. I guess the Smoke Bombs might have been good to put out, but oh well. Black Chibison says, you got my hopes up after the Void Guard variants, and I was super hyped, still am, but I played it on tabletop, and it was insane! My friend is a Kickstarter supporter and got me into the game because of it. Yes, I, I mean, I can tell you, in, our test, in my testing of the Oblivion game mode, it is super awesome in the video game. Um, we definitely are going to get to get it to you as soon as we possibly can, but you know we're not going to launch it before we are confident that it's going to work and work well. Um, and it's not you know nothing to get it done. So we're excited that you're excited, um, and we're working as fast as we can um, early next year. Is the best we can tell you. All right, well, we made you. it to the villain turn. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> uh, yeah. I would say maybe Rise play a card, draw a card, so that he can play a couple cards. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a good one. Swallowed by Shadow. That's not what we want. Yeah, we were whaling her pretty good. I kind of thought we were going to be okay, but... Yeah, that's the thing with Choke Point is that she like combos off of herself on Ultimate a lot. Yeah, Black Jibison, we're playing on Ultimate. Ultimate uh, Choke Point, which is not a joke. She is no joke. I'm going to do this and choose Rise and maybe survive, but unlikely. Oof, all right, let's see. If you play an ongoing card, you might die. Because of Void Slave. Why would you use Temple Grenade? That's like suicide. You said don't play an ongoing card. Sure. So also using temporal grenade is suicide. Like playing it is fine. Using it is suicide. <laughs> You'll destroy it and she will kill you. Actually, she'll kill you when you destroy the environment card. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Oh, I do have another Umbral Siphon. JCC, I am with you. Telephone calls are the worst possible scenario of all communication medium. Like, <laughs> I want to have a written record of whatever we discuss. Therefore, I want a text message or a email or something where I can search it and go back and find what we talked about. Ooh, Eternal Timber. There's a new one. Let's read that. This is a biome. When this card enters play, destroy all other biomes. Uh, reduce all damage dealt by one. At the end of the environment turn, each target regains two HP. That's good. We need that HP. Yeah. Heal it up. Oh, and there the so on the villain turn there, she tried to play an ongoing card, and that void slave got rid of it. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, I did not, but you have now told me. Let's get Rise's card back, and then maybe Rise will survive. Hey, she didn't take one of our cards that turn. All right, it's promising. Uh, 
yeah, I need to be able to use my power at some point. Hmm. Yeah, I think probably best is for Rive to play a card here and I can get stuff into play that will help us. Like I can make some progress on her with Skiamaki, I think, or no, she has reduced damage to herself only, so she can hit herself, so we can do that. Skiamaki. Oh, Eternal Timber is reducing it, but by any means it's increasing it. It's Eternal Timber reducing all damage dealt by one. I really want to hit her with Armbol Siphon, but I don't think I can do that yet. Rive does have cards that let him use extra powers. I just don't have them right now. Actually, your Neurotoxin Dart Thrower is really good for this fight. That was one of the things we were looking for, so. That might let Chrono Ranger live. You don't do any damage, but you will reduce her damage. And actually, if you, you if you get ultimate target on her, then whenever she like hits us, then you can hit her with a toxin to throw her to like mm. stack it up. Uh, yeah, let's see. Does any of these let Ryth use a power here? Because I really want to stop her from healing, but I don't think I can yet. Uh, yeah, if you sudden crunch contract that's the best case here i think so you might lose the ultimate target to the void slave but it's worth a try i think all right so i'm sudden contracting yeah okay to get ultimate target on her And Void Slave will reveal a non-target, so it destroys the ultimate, ultimate target. target. And Choke Point regains hit point, HP, and attacks us. <laughs> but so that didn't work out, but it, didn't it work out. is what we're <laughs> And you can deal a damage. You may as well, well, yeah, I don't know. Nothing you attack will do anything. So. <laughs> yeah. It's worth a try. Magma's Rage! Let's take a look at that. This is a spirit. After this card deals or is dealt damage, put a token on this card. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-environment target with the second highest HP X fire damage, where X equals the number of tokens on this card, plus one. And then another Devouring River comes out. Oh, Biome Town. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think the order matters here. Choke Point is stealing more cards. Hitting us more. That dart thrower is paying off as long as Crown Ranger lives, which may not be much longer. We're gonna have one health after this. No, she should not be healing. Ugh. All right. Rise is still around. 
Yeah, we got this. No problem. You can you can win this fight. We just have to be able to get him to use two powers in a round. Can Chrono Ranger let him use a power? Is that a thing? Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's all we need then. So, uh, yeah, let's go play a card. We can play Somber Tinker and get equipment. Ooh, Lies of the Shadows, that's good. Except it's not, I don't want to destroy, don't want to destroy the Shadow Cloak ever. Uh, or she's going to steal it. Uh, yeah, we have an Umbral Siphon in play, so. Oh, a Cloak Projector would let me reduce her damage as well. But I don't think I have enough powers, but I could end up getting more powers. Uh, yeah, Lies of the Shadows, I'm not going to want. Um, yeah, I may as well play Skiamaki. Oh, she's reducing damage. All right, I'm going to re rewind to play a card. There's no point in playing that. So there's some talk about jury duty happening in the chat. My wife ended up in jury duty and she had to go to a trial. I have never in my life been called for jury duty yet. I also have not been. I definitely would be interested. Like, I'm happy to do it. It's my civic duty, but I have never been called. Ooh, that is a card I wanted. All right. Wraith can let me play a card. Yeah, okay, so I want to use a power. I will use Cloak Projector to reduce her damage. I don't want to destroy the Shadow Cloak. And then Wraith can let me play the card that lets me use the other power. Nowhere to hide. Great card. Bunch of damage. I have the Shadow Cloak, so damage is irreducible until the start of my turn, and I can use Umbral Siphon to do a bunch of damage, and she can't heal. So. <laughs> we subject you to damage! Sir, sit down. That is not the job of the jury. <laughs> <laughs> No damage, no healing. She will keep trying. Uh, yeah, I can discard a card. Right, shifting biomes. Oh, right, she steals cards if I discard them too. That's annoying. Maybe I'll re let's rewind to the end of turn. I'll just Gee, take that damage. Right. We were, we've already seen shifting biomes, right? Yeah, biomes are. We rewind to the end of turn. Yeah. Yeah, I was just checking to see if there were any new environment cards I needed to read out. I will take the one damage. Oh, I like that irreducible. Glass Peaks, I think that's new. Biome, when this card enters play, destroy all other biomes. When a non-environment target enters play, deal it one melee damage. At the end of the environment turn, deal the non-environment target with the lowest HP one melee damage. That may or may not be new. I don't remember if we read that one out or not, but because uh, Shifting Biomes is, I believe, still in play or something, we've got... What's the one it was. Oh, it it's was. Not it's not anymore, but I think... It was when that came into play, so all the all three of those biomes are still in play. Yeah, we are many biomed place. 
It is a multi-biome scenario we're dealing Sentinels with. Sentinels of the multi-biome. <laughs> there you go. I'll, you probably want to play a card. Let's see. We play an ongoing orc woman card. I still have the Void Slave that's going to try to block my ongoing cards, which is annoying. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just draw a card. Oh, that's good. Lurking Shadows lets me increase damage to her. And then use a power. Yeah, okay. I mean, she's only got 20 HP. I feel like you got this. Damage dealt by Rise, two choke point is increased by one. And yeah, let's use Umbral Siphon to block her healing again. And oh, yeah. I don't have the irreducible card right now. Uh, and then I get to use another power. I guess I get Umbral Siphon again just for more damage, but I think I want to use my projector here at the moment. And let's see. Did I get the irreducible damage card? I did. All right. Yeah, I think I want to just play that card. I'll play a different card with the Wraith. This is when I go AFK and let John run the table. Well, there's not much time left because she is going to get knocked out shortly. Yeah, ride by himself with uh, in-cap heroes helping him is terrifying. Oh, look at that! And this is gonna be it. How about we let her just take herself out? Yeah, behold, manly shirtless Chrono. That's exactly what made this work. It was shirtless Chrono. <laughs> so despite it being a pretty tough match, we managed to win. And again, we don't get the victory music because the other music is still playing, but... <laughs> there it is, folks. Our second win of the night against Ultimate Choke Point. And that's good times right there. As much as we try to let you make us lose, we're just somehow failing at that. We are failing at making us lose. <laughs> Good times. All right. So, yeah, it is 8.51. So I think that is going to do it for another episode of Handelabra Live. Uh, again, I will mention, as I did at the beginning of the show, that the schedule for the next two to three-ish weeks is a little bit in flux. So just check our Twitter, check our Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on Twitch to get notifications whenever we go live uh, because of the holidays who knows when we will be online John is gonna maybe try to stream uh, but we'll see um, no promises uh, but we will definitely be back in January so join us uh, then because we've got yeah. not only Sentinels and one deck dungeon and bottom of the ninth but also Aeon's End. Uh, stay tuned. There'll probably That's be great. more dead, more dev streams coming for Aeon's End. Um, you should check out if you missed the Kickstarter. Check out uh, Aeon's End Digital Let me get that link into the chat for you. It is one week until Christmas. It is one. And yeah, week. and actually, uh, Handle Library is going to be closed over the holidays, so. Uh, keep in mind that if you have any support requests, there might be a little slow on the response. Why is it not giving me the host of pre-orders link? Give me the host of pre-orders link. There we go. Boom. Where, Nightbot isn't saying anything anymore. Yeah. Nightbot. Krista, Where are what are you, you doing? Where's Nightbot? So if you have not, if you were not around for the Kickstarter, uh, head to that link. You can still pre-order. Um, there are still stretch goals going. New mages to be included in the game, as well as a pre-order uh, stretch goal for the first expansion for Aeon's End, which you can pledge now to make a reality. 
Um, we would super love it if you did that because we want to make all the expansions for Anne's End. Um, and if we can do that, that would be fantastic. So yeah, Sentinels of the Multiverse uh, is the only cooperative comic book card game that you should be playing. Uh, and please do check out all of our other games uh, at handelabra.com. Thanks for joining us. We do this most Tuesday nights <laughs> around 7. <laughs> Again, as I just mentioned, the next few weeks are going to be a little bit uh, in flux. But if you enjoy the show, please do like, share, follow, and subscribe. Sentinels of the Multiverse, as well as all of our other games, are available on iOS, Android, and Steam, and always in good old analog cardboard ink. And you can find more info and download uh, the demos, if we have them, at sentinelsdigital.com dot com or handelabra.com uh i'm jeremy i'm john have a good night and happy holidays and good night and happy holidays from the handelabra family to you and yours good night everybody thank you for joining us <laughs>